One of the things that helped me out the most early on in long range shooting is when I learned how to visualize what the wind was doing. And I say visualize because when you look at it and break it down to its simplest terms, air or wind is really just really, really thin water. Same like your structure or whatever, but it's just really thin water and it moves the same way. So when you're looking through a terrain, especially like we have here on this range, uh, if you can imagine the ground being like the bottom of a riverbed and the wind moving like water. And whichever direction that you know the wind is coming from is if you can imagine it flowing into this riverbed or the basin, then that can show you in your mind what the actual wind's doing. So if you look down uh, right now, our wind's coming a little bit from the left to the right, kind of in our face. But as it's coming off those back trees back there, you've got a pretty high perch and it will spill off into this area. And because it's really wide open, is you're gonna get a, a, a push down, right? And then right against the tree line, you're gonna have a little eddy. Just like the water, if it flows over something, it gets a little negative pressure on the backside and it gives you a little eddy of wind. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually three tiers or flat areas between us and that far wood line, which is about 2,500 yards on this range. And you have this flat and it'll dip down into a little creek bed and it comes, rises back up again and it drops down into another creek bed with a road and it will move quicker down that road bed and it pick up speed. Then as you come over these hills, you get a little push up and it hits those berms and you have turbulence. So what you really need to visualize is the path your bullet's gonna take down to the target and you can use those little nuances on the ground and how the structures are around it, whether it be a tree line or it be a creek bed or a road or however it is and see what the wind is going to do pushing your bullet. So when you can visualize it, a lot of times that will help you understand where the wind's gonna be stronger or where there's gonna be slack areas that you don't have to worry so much about. So a really neat trick that I've learned uh, over the years to see exactly what the wind is doing at different distances between you and your target, or if you're trying to proof what the wind is doing, is you can focus in on your target with your parallax or with the focus on your spotting scope and then come just off of your target and pull the parallax or the focus back towards you. And what that'll do is as you move it back, you can watch the mirage in the open air and see if that mirage picks up or lays. That's gonna tell you where there's slack or whether it speeds up between you or even if there's a wind change direction. Specifically using mirage as a wind calling device uh, is, is, is pretty easy to do, but it can be tricky as well. So it's, it takes a lot of practice. When you're watching it, you can call a pretty decent wind using your Mirage up to about 10 miles per hour. After 10 miles an hour, the Mirage lays completely flat and you really can't use it anymore to be as a good judge. But if you can see at zero, the, the Mirage will bull and you have two, four, six, eight, and then 10 will start laying flat. And so not only will it give you a direction call, but that angle will give you a speed call. And the best part about Mirage is it gives you a good average of everything between you and your target at ground level. Look, learning how to call wind and seeing wind is the hardest thing to do and learn in long range shooting. So the more you practice it, the more you shoot, you'll get away from the formulas and start trusting your instincts. And that's gonna give you much, much more accurate and better wind calls.